fiendish horror to make your blood run cold. My tale this time has to do with a band of archaeologists who have the temerity to disturb the sleep of the long-dead Mayas. These people of the great city of Waco possess the greater occult powers than we realize, and when the young Tom Hayden accidentally jarred them out of the time lag in the Temple of Eternal Life, he found himself the unwilling victim in the ghostly sacrifice. In the Yucatan section of Mexico, after a hard trek through thick jungles, the expedition headed by Dr. Frank Corwin reaches the object of their search and warily pitches camp for the night. Their leader is elated. There it is at last, the biggest archaeological discovery of the century, the finest example of Maya culture, and it will probably yield the traces of earlier civilizations. But their Indian guides object. My men no stay here, that no ordinary temple, in there still sleep, still alive, powerful Maya priests, it called Temple of Eternal Life. Nonsense. That's only a lot of superstition. Tell your men to get a good night's sleep, and we'll explore it tomorrow. But as the others slumber, Tom Hayden, Dr. Corwin's assistant, gazes at the ancient temple under the magic light of the tropic moon. What a colorful scene this must have been hundreds of years ago. We have learned so much of the customs of the great civilization, which was here long before Columbus discovered America. There were ceremonial dances of the warriors necked in the brilliant plumage of tropical birds. Every year the handsomest youth of the land was chosen, and for twelve months he was lavished with the highest honors. But their savage religious rites demanded that when the time was up, he was led to the top of the pyramid temple and held on the sacrificial stone while the priest ripped his heart out. This discovery is the thrill of a lifetime. I'm going to see what it's like up on top. On top the old temple, Tom finds an ancient copper mirror. What's this? An old reflector. Must have been used to concentrate light rays for some purpose. And this is the sacrificial stone. I wonder how many of those poor devils died here in those bloody ceremonies of the old days. Tom Hayden curiously runs his fingers over the carvings and starts back in surprise. These old glyphs were designed to represent, hey, the stone, it's beginning to move, it's turning. He stares in amazement as the paving slabs move back, revealing a hidden entrance into the temple. This, this is unbelievable. It must have touched a secret lever or something. The interior lights up. Now I see the purpose of the reflector. It collects the moon's rays and illuminates the whole room down there. I must see what's inside. I'll be the first man to set foot inside this temple in seven centuries. I'll be famous. Wait till Dr. Corwin hears about this. The explorer gingerly steps into the vast room. Maya warriors, rows and rows of them, and in perfect preservation. I wonder, what's on that platform over there? The light is moving further in as the moon moves across the sky overhead. Soon I'll be able to see what that is. Hmm, seems like something important. Soon the rays reveal a recumbent figure of barbaric splendor. To Tom Hayden's astounded eyes. It's the high priest himself, but nothing is decayed. He looks as if he's sleeping, actually alive. Tom stands rooted to the spot as he sees the majestic figure start to move. He's getting up. He is alive. The high priest of bygone days turns his piercing eyes upon the petrified explorer. Tom Hayden... You are our man of destiny. You have awakened us after seven hundred years. 
You speak English. Who are you? I am Chaktu, High Priest of Quetzalcoatl, the Sun God. I have looked into your mind, and it has told me the words you will understand. In this temple, the hour of Wako's greatest glory stands still. Here, I and my court have remained suspended in timelessness, waiting for the moment foretold by our wise men long ago. What do you mean? We were sealed in to await the coming of a young man with hair as golden as the sun, who would awaken us for our last great sacrifice before we disappear from the earth forever. And that man is you. Terrified, Tom turns to flee. Sees him. Firmly held by the warriors, he sees his only hope of escape cut off. The opening, it's getting smaller. It's closing. I'm trapped. Then Tom is taken to a hall lined with urns. Each urn represents a year and holds the heart of a young man. The last one waits for yours. You don't dare. Dr. Corwin will get in here tomorrow. Perhaps he will, but it will be too late. One whole year of Quetzalcoatl's time is no more than an hour of your time. Take him away and prepare him for the highest honors that Waka can bestow on the Chosen One of the Sun God. As if in a dream, Tom permits himself to be garbed in my address. The Princess Kalma and her twelve handmaidens will serve you for one full year. Then you all shall die. Tom finds himself living in luxury as the finest viands are his for the asking. My, these fruits are delicious. They are the finest in the whole land. You have but to command. Kalma and her handmaidens entertain the prisoner guest with the exotic dances based on ancient Maya lore. As the weeks and months glide by, Tom finds himself deeply in love with the beautiful princess of the Mayas. Kalma, I adore you. You mean everything to me, darling. My heart is all yours, master. You love me, too. We must live for each other. Avoid the doom which is approaching. We must escape. Alas, my beloved, we cannot. Remember, we are in a magic time lag. This whole year is like one hour in your modern world. What will we do? I cannot lose you. You will not lose me. I will go to the great beyond first, and very soon you will join me. Inevitably, the dread day arrives, and Chaktu, the high priest, comes to make his awesome announcement. Your year is up. The time has come for the last great sacrifice to Quetzalcoatl. No, no. Tom is taken to the top of a steep cliff overhanging the ceremonial pool of the hostage maidens. You will watch as the Princess Kalma and her twelve handmaidens cast themselves down to join the widening bones of the countless others of bygone years. No, no, this must stop. There is no escape, my love. Be brave. Tom is helpless to prevent them. As the twelve lonely girls leap one by one to certain death in the waters below. This is goodbye, my darling. The gates of death will part us. But for only a short while, farewell. Then Kalma leaps after her companions. That night, there is a full moon and ominous drones foretell approaching doom. They're coming. They're coming for me. 
One of the warriors prepares the final urn to receive its ghastly contents. Then Tom is led to the top of the pyramid. Why, there's Dr. Corwin's camp. A year hasn't passed at all. It's still the same night we arrived here. On top, as Tom is held down upon the sacrificial stone, he breaks the spell long enough to utter one terrible, frantic yell. I. Far below, Dr. Corwin suddenly awakes in his tent. What was that? Sounded like a scream. Nothing, I guess. Must have been the cry of some jungle animal. The ancient barbaric rites are reenacted. With all too true realism, as a high priest plunges his copper knife into the victim's chest and holds aloft his prize. Next morning, in the camp, Tom's absence is discovered. Where's Hayden? He's not around. He must have gone on ahead. Come on, we'll climb to the top of the pyramid first. They reach the top and make a grim find. Good Lord, it's Tom. He's been murdered. But what's he doing in that ancient Maya clothing? He's spread on the sacrificial stone exactly as the old Maya victims were. And his heart is torn out. This is awful. I can't figure how. When they break into the temple. Look, warriors standing all around. Nothing but dry bones. And the high priest upon the dais. All skeletons of a vanished empire. Then they look close with amazement at the high priest. Look at that knife in his hand. It is covered with blood. Fresh blood. But that's impossible. He's been dead for seven hundred years. Impossible, eh? Well, you know what happened to poor Tom. So be careful how you venture into ancient temples. This is your little pal, the nameless one, warning you.